Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio. Today I'm sharing with you something I learned from Dina Wakely yesterday on her live stream. I hope that everyone is well. Uh, I'm sheltering in place due to the COVID-19 virus and the fact that my town is shut down and I hope everyone else is also sheltering in place and keeping safe and well uh, while we wait out this virus and hope that it goes away soon. So. Of course, I'm, I wish that I could make a video every day for you because I know everyone's very bored and it's important for those of us who are, in, are entertaining other people that we kind of step up our game a little bit. Um, I'm going to try to do that for the rest of the month, but I don't know how successful I'll be. In addition, um, Peg Robinson and I are going to do, uh, try to do some extra live streaming on our Art Joy of Sharing live stream channel. Maybe a gel printing session or something like that that people can join in with just to keep everyone's mind off the fact that we're stuck inside. And, um, you know, a lot of people have anxiety uh, about what's going on and we want to keep everyone calm. So yesterday, uh, Dina Wakely had a live stream. I think she's planning on having a live stream on, on her Facebook, Art of Dina Wakely Facebook group. Uh, every day. I'm not sure if that's true, but I think it is. And I just happened to catch hers yesterday and she was making uh, a journal in a way that she apparently does in her classes. And she's been telling people she's going to make a video of it and she never does. And it's called a tab bound journal. It's bound with tabs. And the cool thing about this is that you can make it as big or small as you want. You can make it as thin or thick as you want, as many pages as you want. You do need to have an even number of pages, and I believe I ended up with 14. And I think that it's cool to make art journals out of things that are recycled. So I'm showing the, you the things that I made, you know, I started this journal with, and that is um, cardboard mailers from Stencil Girl. You know, I get, I get a lot of stencils from Stencil Girl, and they always come in these cardboard mailers so that the stencils don't get bent. And I always have a lot of those. And so I took three of them that I had and I cut them up and made four and a quarter by eight and a half inch pieces. And then now I am gessoing these pieces. Of course, if it's a tag board or a cardboard, it wants to soak up any media that you put on it. So it's a good idea to put some gesso on it. And while I was doing it, I have this stack of printed tissue paper that was sent to me by a viewer a long time ago. And I think that these are recycled. I think they're from, some of them are from, um, they're, they're for putting in packages. You know, when you, you, you fold something into a package or you use a, a sack as packaging, as a gift packaging, uh, you can use these printed tissue papers. And they're so fun and beautiful. And I think she had a lot of them and she thought I might like to use some in my art. So she sent me a whole stack. And they've got all kinds of interesting patterns. So what I'm doing is I'm using my golden gesso, which is, of course, a, a product that seals the cardboard and makes it, um, it's a, it makes the substrate work better, makes the... Um, the paints and inks and whatever I'm planning on using on this, who even knows, um, <laughs> it makes them not soak into the cardboard. Uh, while it's wet, it does stay a little bit buckled, but when it dries out, it flattens out. So I'm just tearing pieces of this tissue paper because I don't like to start with a white page. I really don't. It does not make me happy. I want something colorful on there. And if it gets covered up in the end by the paints or inks or, or a collage or whatever I put on the page, that doesn't matter to me. It's just some place to start. And instead of using um, some sort of a matte medium to apply this tissue, I'm just using the gesso. And all I have is a little gift card. I'm spreading it on and then I'm uh, putting the tissue down, making sure that there's some gesso underneath it, and then going over the top. In some cases, I'm smoothing it down or wiping back some of the white gesso over the top with a wet baby wipe. Actually, that's one that got left out and I had to respray it. So it's even recycled because it wasn't wet when I picked it up off the, the uh, top of my desk and it was completely clean but dry. So I must have gotten that baby wipe out and then just forgot about it. So I'm not going to make you watch all the pages. And I didn't get all the pages done during the 
um, one and a half hours. I made this during the Art Joy of Sharing live stream. There will be a link to the recorded real-time version of this below the video and you can go, you just go down there and it says see more. You click on that and that opens a whole big bunch of information for you. Links and all kinds of things down there. So uh, you can watch it in real time if you'd like. This is speeded up four times and in some cases eight times fast. Um, now what I'm doing is I'm collecting all the pages. They're mostly dry. It would probably be smart to finish all the gessoing and everything and get them all the way dry. But this, this was during a live stream and I needed to just get on with it. <laughs> get her done. <laughs> so uh, the way that you bind this is what I'm going to try to teach you. And um, Dina Wakely taught this. This is not my idea. And she also credited it to someone else that she saw um, a version of this as well. And she's not sure if that person invented it. But anyway, she did it with three tabs. And what she was using was products from Ranger that's, that are in her line. Dina Wakely uh, has a lot of products uh, made by the Ranger company. And she was using sticky back canvas to do this. I'm using fabric washi tape. So these are some tapes that I have that are just, they're just a fabric with a sticky stuff on them. You could also use duct tape would be really great, like those printed duct tapes. You could use just regular fabrics uh, that you glue down with the tacky glue. As you can see there, I have my tacky glue because I thought maybe these would not be sticky enough. These um, tapes would not have enough sticky to, to really do this, but it ended up working out fine. I've cut my um, tape, I think it's a half inch fabric washi tape. I got it on Amazon. I'll put a link below the video. And then I cut it two inches. So it's like half an inch by two inches. What she had was wider pieces of her sticky back canvas that she'd put some of the colors, her gloss sprays and distressed crayon or, or her regular crayons. What she call them? Scribble sticks, I think. No? Dina Wakely scribble sticks. I think they're called scribble sticks. Anyway, she'd done some of that on them to make it colorful. Then she cut them into like one by two inch squares and is basically doing the same process. She did three instead of five, but I'm doing five because I've made a tall, thin book. So what you do is you put three tabs on and then on your next book, you put two tabs where the three tabs wouldn't be. Flip it over, stick down the three tabs, on the next one, you put three tabs, flip it over, stick down the two tabs. You can just watch. It's three, two, three, two. So if I've stuck, if I've stuck down three tabs when I folded it over, then I need to put three tabs on the next one. If I've stuck down two tabs, I need to put two tabs on the next one. And it's just a process. Um, so now I've stuck down two tabs, so I know the next one is two tabs. And somewhere during this process, I made a mistake because I was live streaming and I did something wrong. I'm not exactly sure what, but it's hard to pay attention when you're trying to talk to people, answer comments, talk to Peg because she does it with me. Um, I might have lost track of tabs somehow. I don't know. But anyway, it all worked. I ended up adding in one section some tape where it wasn't exactly attached. I'm not sure what happened, but you do kind of have to focus here. <laughs> I didn't have enough pieces cut. I had to cut some more, but you can definitely see that this is a simple process. It's three, two, three, two, flipping them over as a book, sticking them down, putting the tabs on the new one, flipping them over as a book, sticking them down. The very last page, you don't have to stick any tabs on because it's gonna just use the last two tabs that are there. And that has something to do with it being an even number. I'm not sure exactly. This is the first time I've ever made one. If you're really particular, you could absolutely measure and mark and make sure that, you know, you put them really neatly and evenly. I'm not that concerned about it. Um, this to me is a junk journal. I used recycled materials. I'm planning on using it for a class. There's a free class coming up that's called uh, sketchbook revival and it's a Facebook group and if you join the Facebook group I guess they're gonna have a class I don't know if it's each month or if it's each week they're gonna have some teachers it's all free and they recommended that you make a junk journal um, for this class I'm not sure what junk journals have to do with sketchbooks I'm a little bit confused I haven't taken this class before but um, I saw some of my favorite teachers were going to have a lesson in it and I thought you know I'm going to join that so it's I think it starts on the 23rd of March 
and I'm planning on doing it. So that's what I'm going to use this book for that or else I have another really beautiful journal that a friend of mine made that I could use as well. So now I just figured I'd finish the first page just, um, you know, to do some art. <laughs> I mean, who really wants me to just sit there and make a journal the entire time? I did want to share how to make this journal because it was just so fun and easy. And the neat thing that the really neat thing about it is it opens flat. When, when I was slipping through it, I hope I showed you guys that it opens flat, completely flat. And a lot of the journals that I have made stitching in signatures, it doesn't. And you end up having a crack in the middle and it's hard to fill in that crack in the center of the page if you want to do a two page spread. Um, but yeah, I just, I wanted to show it because I saw it and I thought it was cool. And it was not my invention, please don't think that it was. Um, I'm sure you'll see some other people who do YouTube videos making one as well. I think uh, Dee Dee Catron made one out of, uh, I just briefly saw, I think she made one and may have made a video using cardboard because she likes to use a lot of recycled materials too. Dina was using, um, I think she calls it art board. And it's sold by Ranger. It's one of her line of products. And it's got, I think it's got canvas adhere to one side and it's cardboard on the other side. I have some that are like that or that are called Canva board made by Canson. And maybe I should have got that and cut it up, but I wanted to make a recycled one. I wanted to, to make it out of these envelopes that I get from Stencil Girl all the time. So I think it works just as well. So I have this uh, stuff on my desk just little pieces of paper in a little bin. I got some of those out. I tore them out. I did some stenciling with Stencil Girl stencils and um, I added some Dina Wakely paint on there with my fingers, kind of making an abstract. Um, the, paint, the colors in the background and the designs in the background with the tissue paper are what inspired the colors of the page. Uh, there was reds and blues and yellows and the one piece was kind of a, um, it had, what are those things called? That kind of teardrop shape. Oh, shoot. It's not coming to me. Someone will say it in the comments below. The teardrop shaped decorative thing. Oh, gosh darn it. I hate it when I can't think of something when I'm doing a voiceover. But, you know, old brain, <laughs> I guess. I guess my brain's getting too old. So I added some more um, of those same type of colors of papers. The red pieces I are actually from sent to me from Germany. Um, they, I believe they were wrapping up oranges. She said it was packaging from oranges. It's an interesting paper. And then I had some gel printed scraps that I tore and stuck on there. Then this uh, little focal image is a stamp that has been stamped onto tissue paper with permanent black ink. The stamp I know is designed by Gina Ahrens. It's one of it's in one of her stamp sets. And last year when I was on her design team, we did a collaboration with another design team member and Leslie was my partner and she sent me this um, stamped tissue paper because I don't actually own that stamp set. So it kind of reminded me of the stuff that was on the tissue paper. Same type of kind of a bohemian uh, decorative a little bit fussy look. So I decided to put that on there. And then after I dried everything up real good, it was time for a little bit of my own hand of sketching. I decided to add some, some shadows with my Stabilo All Black pencil. And I went around some of those circular shapes and gave them a shadow underneath. And then I also went around the flower mandala thing <laughs> and added some shadows around that. Then I got out my Posca pens. This is what a weird thing I've been doing lately is using my Posca pens as paint. Um, you know, I got through phases and they had the right bright colors, the bright yellow, the bright red, and the bright blue. So I'm using them along with my water brush to color in the mandala a little bit with the same colors that are in the background and I'm watering it down. You know, Posca pins are very opaque. So I'm watering them down with the water brush as I apply it. And then in some cases, even blotting with my semi-moist uh, baby wipe. 
So that's how I colored it. I'm also adding some splatters in red and white across the page because I like it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or a question below if you have one. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and turn on those notification bells. All those things really help out my channel, help YouTube's algorithm find my channel and recommend it to other people who might not have found me and that's how the channel grows. So I'm always very grateful when you do those things. Uh, links below the video uh, to the products that I used, those links will most likely be affiliate links to Amazon um, or Arteza. I have an affiliate account with them now. It doesn't cost you anything to use the links. It just takes you right to the thing that, that I use that you might want to purchase. And if you use those links, I get a few cents when you purchase something. So that helps my channel be funded a little bit. Um, also, you guys might have noticed that I added some products that you can purchase. Uh, that's a new thing. I, I, I don't have very many, but they're from Teespring. You can, it's, uh, I scanned some of my art and added them to things like um, printed canvas and blankets and tote bag, um, poster, I don't know, a pillow, I think. Just some of my recent art scanned and added to those products. So anyway, I put some stickers on there that say, be real positive people. That's a good message for this trying time that we're going through right now in 2020. And um, yeah, be real positive, people, because that's about the only thing you can do. And here are your close-ups. Thanks. Bye-bye.